you. We're regarding you as our extended network. Um, and we're looking for your help uh, in, in what we're trying to do. Now, this has been a long time in the gestation, uh, but we're hoping we're going to be able to explore a little bit about what nurturing mindful communities might do in Wales and how we might take it forward. And by we, it is not the royal we, it's all of us, literally all of us in the room. That's uh, We're hoping that that will work. So, just to get us in the mood, I'm going to invite Gwen Ann to lead us in a, in a short practice. So, Gwen Ann, can I pass hey. over to you? Grace, Grace, I think welcome to you all. So, just taking time to just find that, you know, that stillness, if possible, wiggling around until we get into just an element of somewhere that we can feel that we can rest and arrive. Taking time for that arrival, however that is. Just checking in on ourselves, noticing what's here at the moment. Noticing maybe the body has arrived, but the mind hasn't quite caught up yet. Maybe just choosing to pay attention to places where we can rest our attention and ground our attention. Maybe just noticing the contact of the feet and the floor. Allowing ourselves to anchor through our feet, maybe. Maybe choosing the sitting bones, the contact with whatever we're sitting on. We might choose to Place our attention in our hands. The contact of the hands. Wherever they're resting at the moment. Or the movement of the breath. So that we're just taking time to arrive, to anchor ourselves, to ground ourselves. Allowing ourselves to simply be as we are. Taking that time to move our attention into our breath. Pull this breath in. And this breath out. Being aware of whatever is here for us at this moment. Checking in if our thoughts are being distracted, are busy. And allowing ourselves to just honour where the mind is, is at the moment. Maybe expanding the attention just to include the whole of the body sitting here. So that we're checking in on ourselves. Maybe starting at our feet. Moving the attention up through the legs into the sitting bones up the spine front of the body noticing any sensations that might be arising again noticing whether they're pleasant unpleasant just allowing whatever is here. Checking in on the arms, the hands, up into the neck, throat, head.
Noticing if there are any tightness in any part of the body as we just scan it gently. Noticing if there are tightness, there's a tightness somewhere. And if we find any tightness, just see what it's like to breathe in and around that tightness. So just allow it. Maybe reminding ourselves we don't need to be different in any way. Just as we come to the end of this arrival practice, taking those deeper breaths. And then when you're ready, opening the eyes if they've been closed and coming back to the screen if that feels okay. Oh, thank you, Gwenham. And hopefully that's cleared all of the, uh, the busyness of the day ready for you to get thinking tonight there. So what we thought to do tonight, I'll give a little bit of uh, an introduction to how we got here. And then I'm going to take you through the presentation that we've prepared, not as a presentation, but really talking to the processes of it and why we put various uh, things, why we've chosen certain words and things like that. Uh, and that is actually for you to get your critical minds on, hopefully constructively critical. Uh, but this is this is a bit by way of a bit of a test. Have we got the nuances right? And, and, and if I can explore with you some of the ways I know I didn't get it right to start with, uh, that assuming that we were starting with a blank sheet. And of course, in Wales, we're not with anything to communities. We're not starting with a blank sheet. Uh, assuming. I don't know all sorts of, of things about what people might be thinking. And this is where the test is for you there. If anything jars with you, we need to know. Potentially, and we'll be asking this at the end, potentially this is something really important that we could really make a difference with in Wales. So let's just see what you think, see how it lands. Uh, and and Joe, Joe Lloyd, I'm going to pick you up. Uh, just for a minute there because you asked a really really interesting question of me earlier on today when i was talking about could we get uh, a meeting with somebody from uh, one of the regional uh, partnership boards uh, and joe asked what support do you want from them um, no no this is so important the nuances are important no it's actually support we want to give to other people so those are the sorts of things to look out for if you agree or disagree if it lands with you on the way way through so I will get to that in a minute, then we'll do that as a workshop, then we'll have some breakout rooms for you to have a little bit of a compare notes on, on what you think, whether you think we've got something that uh, that we could take forward, uh, that Mindfulness Wales could be have have a narrative and some action that, uh, that might take it forward. Uh, and then we'll have some questions and answers and time to discuss that. And what I would really hope is that that's not the end of the conversation. I'm really hoping by then we will all be in it together, what the it ends up with. Let's see what you think by the end of that. So let's have a, a little look then at what, we, what we've been doing there. So Mindfulness Wales, small board of people, big ideas, and obviously only the capacity of the people. You know, we've only got 24 hours in a day. And if we are to do anything as Mindfulness Wales, we rely on our wider network. Uh, and that's something we've been developing since we uh, we started in uh, 2020, when the only thing we could do was online. Uh, but uh, and so we've got a whole library, a lovely library. Please go back and have a look at them. We've got some cracking inputs uh, over the, uh, the years that we've been going. But it feels like time to up our game. It feels like time now to move out, face outwards. Uh, and if we are serious about our aim, which is to spread mindfulness, to help Wales become a more compassionate, kinder, fairer and more sustainable society, that we might need to be more proactive. 
So that's what this is about. Can we be more proactive? And is this the way or a way that we could do it? Uh, and one of the things that came out of this is that we would really like to know more about what mindfulness is already go on, going on in Wales. Uh, and there is a lot. Uh, and a couple of people are he here tonight that uh, that we found out about by some, by default and are, are really writing up as a story uh, that um, the, the people from Thri thriving communities, so you, yeah, you have labelled yourself so people will know who you are there but we had no idea that all of this work was going on and the same will be going on all over wales so how do we find out about it well we're trying to get the money to do a scoping study to see if we can do a little bit of a a collection of the state of mindfulness in wales at the moment because we aren't starting with a blank sheet there's loads of mindfulness going on uh, and again we need you to help us with that uh, and when you hear of things, making sure we uh, we know about it, especially when we found our researcher, we got the funding and we got a researcher to get out there and find it. And to communicate all of this and to display the stories, the case studies, the stories we're already collecting, we need a much more developed website. So the other thing we're working on at the moment is a bid for funding for a redeveloped and completely bilingual website so that we really are meeting needs and that will be a communication tool but also well two two way something we can get communications from people but also put all of the exciting developments out there so those are some of the things we're doing i hope you've all filled in the survey of interest that, uh, that was on the email that came out with the the link on it um, we're up to about something like nearly nearly 80 responses and that's important because uh, my advisors at the Torvine Voluntary Alliance, who are being really, really helpful in terms of putting in bids, said that it will be much stronger if you can prove that other people want this information, not just you as Mindfulness Wales. And I think we've got a lovely response. So any more that can be added to it, uh, we'll put that together and that can be part of our, our bids. We can show that there really is interest in finding out what's going on. So that's where we are on that one. So, in terms of nurturing mindful communities, this started on the 25th of October when we had an input from Kelly Boyce uh, in, from uh, based in Los Angeles. And you think, okay, so what? That's a bit different to Wales, but actually it's not because what she was talking about was working with human beings. And that uh, recording, if you haven't watched it, it's worth watching. It's on in our library on the website. Um, and she had some lovely videos that showed how lots of sectors had come together. They'd really got to understand each other. They'd improved their relationships and the, uh, the warmth and commitment and the values were really palpable in her, her couple of videos. So they're really powerful things. And I think she was pretty inspirational, but the point is, how does that fit in Wales? And we're not starting with a blank sheet. And some of you will have been there for the follow up discussion. Some of some of our sessions, we've had a follow up discussion a week or a fortnight afterwards, smaller group of people chance to go more in depth into what it was. And that, that helped us to realize we've got the public service boards, we've got regional regional partnerships already in place, which have been in place for probably 14, 15 years, already including all the sectors, third sector, health, fire, police. You know, all, all of the all the local authorities, all of the main players in an area. Wouldn't it be a coup if we could get one of those on board? Now that would be a case study to write up. So that's that's one of the ideas we had. But also the issue about there is so much mindfulness going on that uh, that we need to collect it. So all of that came from that building mindful communities. And maybe it wasn't new ideas, maybe it was just drew together some of the things that we knew about, but we hadn't put them together in the narrative. And maybe this is our chance to do that. So Richard Edwards, um, who I'm hoping will come in tonight. Um, no, he hasn't come yet. I've just checked the, uh, but, but I want to thank him. And if I don't get a chance to thank him tonight, I will. I need to thank him publicly because he's the chief executive of Mindfulness Initiative, but he was been based in, Car he was based in Cardiff and worked with a homeless charity in Cardiff for many years. Uh, and he offered to help put this together. And we're hoping he's got a contact with the Cardiff Public, uh, Public Service Board, so that will come down the line. 
Uh, and so I've spent some lovely hours with Richard teasing over what I'm going to show you tonight uh, and just building up, checking. So it's been, we, we've checked it together so far, but it hasn't had a public outing of any sort. And before we take it anywhere out, what we need, anywhere else, we need to, to check it out with you. And so that's what I'm, I'm going to do now there. We needed it to fit with the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act, the ways of working, which is not top down, but co-creation, cooperation, all of those ways of working that are part of the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act and the expectation. Uh, and the other thing is the sense of community. Wherever we are in Wales, we may not always get on, but there are really strong communities all over Wales. It's one of the things that is one of our USPs. So maybe there are some particular ways we can go in on this initiative with uh, within Wales there. So anything else anyone wants to anything wants anyone wants to add anything before I go into the presentation and not as a presentation, but as a work through of what we've thought about so far. You might have to shout out because I can't see you all now because I'm on spotlight. Yeah. Okay. Forever, you don't have to forever hold your peace. Please make copious use of the chat. Uh, it's the, the remember we get to keep the chat, so that's really important uh, at any point. So I'm going to make sure the chat is open. There we go. There we go. So, Joe, thank you for offering. We can get a few more uh, answers from the surveys. Yeah, we've got some other places to ask there. This, this is what tonight is about. If we all get onto it, we'll get, we're so much richer. So thank you for that. Okay, so let me share screen then. There we go. Okay. So as I said, I'm not going to give it as a presentation. I'm going to explain a little bit about what's, uh, what's going on here. Uh, that nurturing, I put it in green because it is really important. The slot that we did with Kelly was called Building Mindful Communities. And as Richard and I were, were going through and we were talking about it and said, you know what, building's not right. It isn't starting at the right place and anyway, it's a bit hard. Uh, and so we played around with various words, creating, growing, but nurturing seems to sum up what it is we want to do. It's got uh, elements of care, looking after, meeting people's need where they are. Uh, it doesn't mean that nothing's already happening. It can come, you can nurture at any point in a plant's growth, for example. So nurturing mindful communities was what it became. Uh, and again, you know, comment on that if, if that feels right or wrong to you. Uh, but just to explain, the, the nurturing feels, it felt appropriate to Wales. So tell me what you think. There we go. So what are we about? This is uh, about Mindfulness Wales. What is Mindfulness Wales about? To help Wales become a more compassionate, kind of fairer, a more sustainable society. And find me the person who doesn't agree with that, but is a bit broad. So we've been working on that one there, but it didn't tell us how. And that's what we're trying to really suss out Mr. Day. I put this one in to remind us to do a practice. If I was doing, doing this as a presentation, of course, we wouldn't have had the lovely uh, arrival practice we did with Gwen and we, we would be in a meeting there. And I have got much braver about this, but quite insisting if I'm doing a talk to anyone, then we will have a, a short practice. Uh, and even if you see people looking a bit uncomfortable at first, there's not many groups that doesn't actually settle. So a short practice would be really something that uh, that I would want to do. Just to say as well, what I'm hoping is that if this resonates with you, I'm hoping you might be able to give this, that we make the slide, slide deck available for you to be able to take away and amend for any group you had the choice to work with. So, uh, so have a look at it in that respect as well. Could I do this? Not that you can't hide slides or alter them, but does it resonate that you would be able to talk to people if we're all in this together? 
Okay. And then we said we needed to start recognize that we're starting from a strong base. And this is the bit that was absent from the first couple of, of, of goes there. And I'm thinking, how patronizing can you get? Sounds so patronizing if I'm talking about you're not doing any of this already. Uh, because they are, and we all know there's a lot more that can be done. Um, but there are good relationships. There are really strong links between organizations. Even I came across a couple of um, a, a police constable and a support officer at a meeting to do with something completely different. I just got talking to them out of interest. Uh, and the enthusiasm which they talked about all the organizations that they are linked with, that they work with in terms of the young people in their area. Well, I'm just thinking, to, you know, it, I took a step back and said, you know, we've got to go in recognizing how intertwined we already are. And that was my bad. No, uh, but we have got shared values. We don't always put them into practice. Uh, and this is, oh, sorry, let me go forward again. This is our USP as well, isn't it? That for Wales, we've got a shared culture and identity. It is really strong. Uh, and somehow we need to weave that through. And because this was developed with a view that we might be get a chance to pitch at a public service board or a regional partnership, then recognizing that all of this is already embedded within the established public service board and regional partnerships. And I know they don't all work as well as they might, but they have been going for a while and there will be all sorts of good things coming out around them. Uh, and I think we need to acknowledge the work that's been done over a number of years now. So what might a mindful community look like? Let's have a little play with that, what, what it might be. Uh, and I, I've got to admit, I'm not very sure about this. I don't know that this sings to me. Uh, so, you know, any suggestions on this one? Um, because actually it's people uh, walking the talk uh, and maybe something as simple as that would be it there. It's about being mindful in how you relate to each other. It's actually being the, the authenticity that we talk for those of us who are mindfulness teachers, we talk about the authenticity. We need to be mindful in order to to bring people along with us there. Um, so it's about living that, it's about being mindful in your own life. If you're going to be mindful in a group, sharing mindfulness in their group, the sharing is important here, helping individuals. And I'm going to come back to the cope, connect, flourish and power change in a moment some obvious stuff about being collaborative, inclusive, open, cohesive, co-creative and working together and supporting each other. And I'm not entirely sure that doesn't look a little bit like motherhood and apple pie. And maybe there's, you know, tell me what you think. But the important thing is weaving mindfulness into community. And I'm going to play you a video now. If I can make this work, let me stop the share and go into my iMovie and play you a video. This is at a very early stage. Here we go. Let me go right back to the beginning. Okay. So let me put that down a minute while I talk about what I've done. Oh. Sorry, stop. I can't get rid of my uh, PowerPoint now. I might have to go back into it. There we go. So I've got you back now. Okay, so we originally I thought I'll use the two videos that Kelly Boyce used of the finished product when people had got together and they'd had a retreat day together and they were full of all of that wonderful enthusiasm and it was inspirational. And then I thought, but actually we got a lot going. Can I collect some videos? Which is easier said than done, but some of it I already had. So I'm going to invite you to look at a video now, which is a bit too long. My iMovie skills are improving, but they're not there yet. And I'm really reluctant to do too much cutting. So I know they're a bit long at the moment, but I'm going to share my screen and invite you to watch this 
few clips of move, uh, uh, of things in Wales that show some of the practice we've already got that we could weave together, weaving into communities. So let me go, let me share screen and go to my, there we go. Go to my iMovie, go to my desktop and see if I can get this to work. Where's my iMovie? There we go. Okay. And then working with the third sector organization, I can see, you know, uh, oh, I minute. feel that my job. Sorry, man, mate, you're actually further back than not. I need to go back to the beginning. Nicola, you're in the audience. This is your moment to start. Okay. There we go. Let me put that so you can see it now. Amazing. And I've also noticed that the children, uh, especially in the dot B lessons, are getting a lot calmer, they're listening better. And also with my ear group, I know I'm a bit biased, but I have noticed, you know, and it it doesn't come overnight. It's been drip feeding, as I said. He's working from your seven all the way through to your eleven, and obviously they grow and mature as well in between that. But I've noticed that they not they nicer human beings. You know, they they can hold a conversation, socialize, and you know really be fulfilled and and really calm at ease, and you know have a lot more confidence. Um, you know, and they they I. I believe their behaviour has improved as well. Not all, you know. I'm saying in every school, in every year group, the you know children are a little bit um, not as well behaved um, as as normal. Um, but I, I do feel that the health and it has made a big difference. You know, teaching them dot be dot be with a mental health and well being. I definitely, I definitely recommend it because it's just changed me as myself so much and I know to maybe yeah. be a little bit more kinder to other people and it should make me calm down even more and be more soothing than driving the threat and I think it's very important for people to know about drive soothing the threat so they can recognise their emotions. Yeah, I, I would most definitely rec recommend it to other schools because it's changed me as a person because I used to be angry and I didn't know what to do with my anger but now that I, you've introduced us to Bob Bob I have been more calmer and it just makes me feel happy. I Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. I do really recommend it because mm. as a person, I I wouldn't say I was mean, I wouldn't say I was the nicest person before, but I think it's kind of changed me and I'm more compassionate to, mm. to my own peoples in the class now and I'm nicer. Um, so I recommend it because it can express as your feelings and you'll find more research into it. Oh, thank you, Caden. I a thousand percent recommend it because I've got my little sister doing it now, think of breathing, and it calms me down when she gets on my nerves. And I would recommend it because it could also help people that like to fidget a lot and like move around and yeah, a lot. <laughs> and maybe like it could calm them down. So they move, like, move around less, like, so they, um, what's the word, less distracted by other things, because when I'm in my calm place, no one can take me out of my calm place. Hi, we at Can Do Project, we love, absolutely love going into the woodland. For us, it's so important to be inside a woodland breathing the wonderful air, being away from the traffic, the noise, and just being ourselves, or we become ourselves, because we quieten down, we slow down, we have a slow walk, we let nature come to us. We don't have any expectations of what we're going to have on the walk, because it's always different. 
if we just let ourselves be ourselves, find that quiet within us. It's amazing how much nature gives us, how much the trees, the air, the birds. It gives us so much, it's beyond what you can talk about because it's, it's vast, it's vast. And we none of us know that this treasure on our doorstep brushing shoulders with us every day. I mean, mostly ignore it and just, we've got to rush from A to B. We've got to walk the dog. We've got to go to work. That traffic light, is it going to stay green? It's like all of our lives are like that. And we've got into such, that is it. That's our life that we actually missing our lives because our lives are made up of these moments, these moments of silence and peace and allowing nature to come to us. Hi, I'm Stephen, and I've been going to the Can Do Project now for about 16 months, and I really feel the benefit of being in presence, in the present moment, in nature, at one in nature. I know it sounds quite hippie-ish, but it's something that everyone can benefit from on their doorstep. Um, nature is there for us accessible to us we just have to slow down and in this fast-paced world with so many distractions of 24 rolling ticker news facebook TikTok, what have you you can get lost really and forget to just slow down recharge your batteries and be in the present moment hear the birds singing um, and connect with yourself and other people in the community and nature and um, see nature as um, complementary and gain from friendships and trust rather than uh, separation and fear all the time and um, yeah you begin to slow down and it has a powerful effect in your everyday life really because you don't get drawn into gossip and reacting to what friends say and arguing as much. It slows down the mental chatter of your mind. So I find I ruminate a lot less and you just enjoy living in the present moment as a gift because the present is a gift. Whereas the past is depression and the future is anxiety. And really all we have is the present. We just have to take the time to open our eyes and open all of our senses to to feel it and i have learned a lot being as a gp and then working with the third sector organization i can see you know uh, i feel that my job is more fulfilling working with the third sector organization and as a gp together uh, if I am on either as a GP or a third sector organization, just a third sector organization, then I think, you know, something is missing. So these uh, GP surgeries or healthcare organizations need to unite with third sector organizations to make a difference in people's life. Yeah. And nowadays we are, we want people to take ownership of their own health. And that can only happen if the health sector and the third sector organizations, they unite with each other. I work as a therapist in adult mental health services, NHS Wales, and I will often bring mindfulness into a session as a helpful grounding technique to many of my clients if it, if I think it fits. Uh, for example, a client with disability might have a fear of falling. It can be helpful to, to introduce mindfulness to them so they have more confidence. Or a person who suffers from chronic pain, I'd encourage them to practice some form of mindfulness every day to help them with their thoughts and their relationship to pain in a different way. Or maybe a person who has trauma, it can help them stabilise, stay within their window of tolerance. Or if they have an informal practice of their own, they might have a discipline that they'd forgotten about. I can introduce mindfulness to them and how it can be useful to do informal practices. There we go. Let me stop the, the share then. So those are some clips. Just to explain, those are some clips that I had. Yes, and I know I need to be a bit more drastic in terms of editing there. But the question there for you is that uh you know 
to do the clips at the non-finished uh, stage work for you rather than the finished product that we could we could borrow from the uh, the uh, presentation that was the US uh, some do some lo more local ones work there so let me share my screen again and go back to the presentation there we go okay current slide okay so that's the one that isn't singing to me tell me if it sings to you i think you know too uh, too wordy uh but this is this is quite a useful one this this list actually is part of a list that was sent for me from a, a help sheet that they use in welsh government there but it's really about making the point that mindfulness is not just meditation and i think that was made in some of those videos uh, that mindfulness is about forest bathing or just how we are and that's what that other slide doesn't do it's how we are as much as sitting you know doing doing a practice not that I'm underestimating the importance of of practice there but this is what we mean by bringing mindfulness into your life there so there's a lot there about pausing returning our attention noticing acknowledging connecting these are the things in our behavior that are going to make the difference so uh, so coming back to, to what mindfulness is, is much more than meditation. And in an earlier slide, I talked about cope, connect, flourish and empower change. Uh, and I've used those as um, a sort of a touchstone for, for my, me to explain what mindfulness is. Uh, and I got those from when I was doing some work with a group of educators. And we had I had pages and pages of uh, of flip chart sheet after flip chart sheet of of um, post it notes about what mindfulness could do, and some of it was a bit far fetched. And let's be realistic; it's good, but you know, it can't work miracles. Uh, but when I put them all into piles, these are the piles that emerged. Uh, and the point, the reason I use this is because it's about so much more than coping. So many people think mindfulness is only to help you when you're in trouble. And of course, it does help you when you're in trouble and it helps you with difficulties. And, and it's really, really powerful. I don't want to underestimate that at all. So it is about helping us cope. But connecting, what about belonging? That, uh, that sense of belonging, whether it's within a family or a group or even to Wales, not wherever that sense, and, and places and nature uh, and so much evidence that the strength of our social networks is one of the most effective protective factors against anxiety and, and uh, depression. So it is about how we relate to each other. And it isn't enough to survive. We need to thrive if we want a fulfilling life. Uh, and flourishing would be things like compassion, trust, awe and wonder, care, kindness, gratitude, all of those things, joy, happiness, all of those things that and this was educators so this was what we want for our children but isn't it what we all want if we want to to improve our lives enhance our lives I like that word enhance and then the last one empower change if we are much more in touch with what's happening if we are really aware of the what what's influencing our decisions how we are feeling at the moment we're going to make better choices and that is how we empower change in our lives. The choices we make are so important. And if we're making them on the basis of being angry or upset or not coping, then we're not going to make the good choices that might be able to empower change. Change is going to come. So can we empower change and use all of this to make better decisions? That's what that, where that comes from. You may or may not find it useful there. And then this is something Richard and I worked on there. Uh, there may be too many words on this one there, but if you were using it, you could pick and choose the ones that were going to be most relevant to the group you're talking to. And they're probably all relevant in terms of uh, public service boards, uh, but there will be some that will be more relevant than others. And that might be, be one to do a pick of a pick of choosing there, but I'll just leave you to have a little read through that. I'm finding myself editing now. I'm looking for spelling mistakes. But what I'd be happy to do is I will email you 
uh, this afterwards so that you can have a look if, if that if you feel that would be useful you may feel no, too many emails already but if it would be useful to you to have a deeper look then i'll happily share what we've done with you for you to uh, to be able to have a look at and then i'll say where where could a mindful community start and if i'm going back to the examples we had uh, from kelly boys what the videos were about something that had been going on for quite a long time there and we aren't anywhere near that position there so want to look at where it might start and it, frankly anywhere where there's an open door so it might be one passionate individual although I, um, Nicola was here tonight we've had a discussion earlier on about how it can't stay with one passionate individual because it's not sustainable if that one person passionate individual moves on or is ill or anything else then it falls apart so it a passionate individual can work wonders but it needs to to go out it might start with a group of leaders they want to do a leadership course uh, it might start within a team who uh, who picked it up for themselves across an organization or working out wider within and between organizations in a geographical area there's our public service boards and this is where we want to go isn't it can we get it to be part of national culture that we could all be nice to each other uh, and leaving that in there is something we might want to work towards that's uh, an aim worth having don't you think and this is particularly addressed to the public service boards there uh, and acknowledging why they might be interested what there might be in it for them uh, we've talked about their powerful existing relationships you know they know each other and because we do know each other in wales uh, they've already done lots of projects together, lots of work together. There will be joint working. People in their organisations will know each other. And we're, they're already committed to building, sustaining, flourishing communities. I'm coming back to that, flourishing again. They've got well-developed partnership working. At the heart of what they're doing is their concern for the health and well-being of the workforce and the population and all of the barriers to that, the pressure on services and attendance and attitudes and behaviour. And public services are complicated. Yeah, I really, the complexity in developing policies and strategies uh, to reduce pressure on communities. And we have to recognize that there are barriers, but can we get round those to facilitate co-production, co-creating and inclusion? There we go, so some shared aims. Put that out there as some shared aims that mindfulness wales and psbs this is coming back to where mindfulness wales might might have a part to play let me just let you have a quick look at that I'm trying to, to tease out what what mindfulness wales part in this might be and that's why i need questions like that from from joe there we need to work this out and we need to make sure we're making it clear so we might help leadership and if I can find it there is a video about leadership so have a little look at what we've said about leadership there mindful leadership is going to make such a difference all of the qualities of mindfulness that we are all familiar with those skills of focus clarity creativity compassion so whether you are a leader or you work with leaders this is really important so let me stop the share and go back to my iMovie. And we are nearly at the end. Please don't panic there. Let me go back to iMovie. There we go. There we go. Have a look at, at this. Now this is pinched. There we go. This is pinched. Let me go back to the beginning of that one as well. You can see I, I don't quite know my way through iMovie at the moment. There we go. Uh, pinch from the Mindfulness Initiative uh, mo uh, video of mindfulness in Westminster. And what I've taken out from that is Richard Davis, of course, who's the chief executive and who's helped to work this. I don't know whether he knows I've pinched it yet, but I did, did ask if I could. 
um, because he's Cardiff based and I've got Jessica Morden who's Newport East uh, and some and Chris Ruan, our very own Chris Ruan, who is on the screen. Uh, I've pulled out from that from the Westminster video some of the people relate to Wales. Now I have also asked for some uh, talking heads, some people to talk about how leadership helps them in their uh, in their leadership. Uh, and people have looked the other way, not that there isn't leadership examples, but you know what it's like. And I've done this myself and I've been asked to, to provide a clip of video. You look the other way. So we might need to work a bit harder on that one. But let me put that there. I get round the outside. Oh. oh, I need to go out of that again and back to my iMovie. Okay, I need to get to the beginning. Let me, there we go. Okay, you can see why I haven't put this onto YouTube yet. It's not ready. But, uh, oh, get to the beginning, please. Oh. Okay, now I need to share screen again, don't I? Just aware that I'm not sharing screen. Let me go back to Zoom, share screen, and hope I can get it to share from the beginning. Okay. And in mindfulness allows people to develop four qualities. It allows them to develop focus, clarity, creativity and compassion. And it gives them a toolkit to be able to do that. It helps you to learn to listen better. It's not always about agreeing with people, but in terms of the respect that you can gain by truly listening to somebody and taking on their viewpoint, if you've listened to it, then that becomes part of you and part of your direction moving forward. Well, I think it's hard. We used to practice on a Tuesday night to sit down with 20 people from all political parties on a Tuesday night and then to be nasty to that person the following morning at Prime Minister's questions. So it has led to a, a greater degree of understanding. Oh, yeah. Let me stop the share, get rid of that. There we go, and I'll go back to sharing screen and the presentation. And we are nearly, nearly at the end. There we go. There we go. There we go. So some suggestions about how public service boards might move forward, where they might start. Yes, again, some obvious things there. It's maybe a bit of overkill. Maybe we need to ask them. Mindfulness Wales is about making the connections, sharing information. We are not, we're not looking to do that. We've got some expertise in mindfulness. Uh, we might be able to match people up, but we need to be careful about what we are offering. Uh, this is about something that people might want to pick up and run with. And this one, some possible questions for discussion, which might be suitable. What, what have we already got? What do we need from the outside? What resources? Who's in at the beginning? And how can we move it out? But importantly, where are our existing mini mindful communities? So just let you have a quick scan down through that. And that would be if you were giving the presentation some possible questions for discussion. Now, having given that, I can already see some places I would want to uh, to alter it there. Um, but we really want to know what you think there. So I'm just checking how many have we got. Uh, I think we'd, we'll have three, three groups. Uh, and we'll have um, well, Heather, Heather, you're going to be my timekeeper. 15 minutes from when we get into the group. So let me set up some, some breakout groups. And we really want to hear from you. Breakout rooms. Let's have three rooms. There we go. Oh, those are quite big. I'm going to go back 
recreate, I'm going to have four rooms. So you all get a chance to go. There we go. I think that looks a bit better. You'll all have a chance to talk there. Okay, so 15 minutes takes us to 10 past, Heather. You're in charge of timekeeping because I always forget. There we go. Well, welcome back, everyone. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to hearing uh, what uh, what you have to say. Uh, I've got message to self here. Less is more. Some of that can go. There was much too much of it. But uh, let's see what. Well, it'll be interesting to know what sang to you and what, what didn't. And let's, uh, let's work, or if any of it did. Uh, Chris has asked, can, uh, can people put their location and organisation with their name? Put it in the chat. If you've got, if you're part of an organisation, put it in the chat. If you uh, can't work out the work out the re rename in there. So, anyone got any thoughts to share? Then, I'm really interested in in any feedback you've got. Uh, you know, you can put, if you go to reactions at the bottom, you can put your hand up and and you go to the top of the screen, or you can just call out. Tony, you've unmuted. Does that, I mean, <laughs> is that a sign? <laughs> Yes, should I be muted? Well, only if it doesn't matter. It depends. Do you want to say anything? <laughs> no, I, I've, I said, I've said enough. <laughs> I thought that might be a sign that you wanted to say something. No, no. It's like when you move and that means you're a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'd love some feedback from someone. Oh, we're getting some stuff in the chat there. Oh, well done. You, yeah, you identifying who you are. Chris, we got the chat, so we'll know who people are. So I would love a little bit of feedback, some, some of the stuff that went on in your groups. Is Shanti. Thank you so much, Liz. Hello, everyone. Um, I, the, in our group, we were sort of more questioning rather than trying to answer any questions, um, because I think there are more questions than answers at this point. But um, there were a couple of us who were um, were not associated with uh, any organization, but the practices that we teach are uh, not necessarily mindfulness practices, but are very linked, like um, specifically mindfulness practices, but are very linked in that um, practices like Tai Chi and yoga and Alexander technique and meditation, um, whether it's mindfulness meditation or otherwise, um, are practices that we bring to um, individuals or to groups. Um, and I think one of the questions was, um, is there a place for people like us in this forum? And is there a way that we can contribute um, to what Mindfulness Cymru is, is sort of moving towards in creating these mindful communities um you know you were talking about these weaving of communities and is there a place for individuals who aren't associated with organizations to kind of get involved with creating this wow what a cracking question <laughs> uh, where are you based shanti um i'm sort of between brechva and and uh Neverland and cardigan so kind of pembrokeshire so cardiganshire and kamarthanshire yeah. Uh, and it depends whether groups fall, communities fall into local authority areas or, or not, and how, where they're connected there. But wouldn't it be wonderful if that more people could know about what was going on and could pick and choose bef between the different groups and there will be some things that suit some people and some things that suit others. And I'm saying absolutely yes to the contribution uh, because it's part of the, that patchwork, isn't it, that people can pick up. But the the, mindful, the nurturing mindful communities is about actually getting the patchwork to join up into a patchwork quilt, mm. so that we are all doing our thing. You no, know, this is not about not doing your thing and doing it as you do it. It's about knowing that you're doing it as part of something that is bigger than that and contributing to how we might want to influence how we are as a community, as a, a wider community around the people who are actually in our room uh, and how we work it out and out and out in bigger and bigger circles until we get something that we expect we can expect how we all are in Wales perhaps all of us is a bit of an exaggeration but you know where I'm going for on that 
Does that is that so it is about you people yeah. know what you're doing and you knowing what other people are doing and there being a network of, of provision for the people that you do you you are working with spreading spreading the word does that make any sense to anyone it makes absolute sense how would you suggest um starting to plug into the wider network and I mean, you were talking a lot about public service boards. Um, there's public service boards, there's local authorities, there's councils, there's the NHS, there's all of these kinds of services. Um, is there one particular kind of <laughs> um, part of the patchwork that would, um, would be good to plug into in that sense? Um, it'll be different in every area, but man meat, would you be able to see, say something about plugging in? Because that's what thriving communities has been really good at in terms of just plugging into what else is around. Yeah. So um, some of you know me, but some of you don't know me. I'm a GP based in uh, Kefili in Cardiff, and I have been um, uh, in that GP surgery for more than two years, uh, more than two or three years, started during the COVID time. And uh, since then, I have been attached with a thriving community, community interest company. And I've got Esther there as well in this meeting from thriving communities. We have got a, I have to say that I'm very fortunate that I found right people at right time. And we all together are a wonderful, you know, uh, highly, I have to say that very energetic, passionate people working under thriving communities umbrella. And uh, we have uh, either through the, uh, I think, uh, for me, because of the GP, I've got like, I as a GP partner, I have found some links, you know, with various different uh, um, uh, social sectors or under the NHS sectors, like working with the GDAS or various links we have eventually found uh, through Gabo. So linking in, linking in with the, you know, other third sector organizations or whatever comes on your way, just take it as an opportunity and just go <laughs> don't you know lose the opportunity to join or shake hands with any other organizations so that's what i have to say esther might be another person to talk from thriving communities and share something more esther would yeah, you... I, I just say amongst even the participants they have connections where they work and that's born fruit as well for us you know we've had people who have actually connected to Kapili Carers, so we've now we're in the midst of a collaboration with them to deliver to unpaid carers a mind the body wellness program. That wouldn't have happened without possibly wouldn't have happened. I don't know, but you know, it's all helped. And um we alongside our mind and body, we also have a very active um happiness and well-being group. And um it's over 800 members on Facebook. And we encourage them to participate in as many activities. And a lot, of, some of it's in nature, some of it's a social activity. And, um, and yeah, I mean, all the time there's, there is that mindfulness in practice. They sometimes don't necessarily know it's mindfulness, but it is. <laughs> that's, that's the trouble you see. And it's like that definition of mindfulness. So, um, you know, as I said, because well, we need that definition, but examples, it, it, they define best by examples of what you're doing. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Esther and, and Mamid there. And uh, Shanti, Joe has put something in the uh, chat as well about going to your local uh, community volunt voluntary council, is that uh, CBT? Yeah. So, Shanti, if you look for your uh, local Community Voluntary Council, which is either Pavs or Cavs. So Cavs is Carmarthenshire, Pavs is Pembrokeshire. But you can just put in local CVC and they'll a list will come up so you can find your nearest one. Um, they'll usually have a health and wellbeing officer. Um, you can make links with them. They can then help you to make links to other organisations in your areas. 
Uh, most of them will run um, some sort of bulletin, so you can sort of advertise for, for free on there. And a lot of the communities now are having um, sort of, it's like a social media platform that isn't like a, a Facebook or anything. So in Torvine, we have Connect Torvine, and it's a platform where all organisations can uh, become members for free, and then they can advertise their classes, what's going on, what days, it's interactive. And most areas throughout Wales are now having those as well. So whoever your local CVC is, they should be able to help you with if there's a platform in your area that you can then use as well. Um, but most of them will help sort of promote you and advertise and link you to, to different organisations that can help you grow and thrive within your community. Thank you, Joe. That's really helpful. And okay. the other this is what, uh, and, and Shanta, you filled in the questionnaire, actually, haven't you, to say, yes, it would be useful to know. Uh, and if we can get this scoping study off the, the ground there, then we'll find lots of things that are going on locally. Uh, and Wales being Wales, we won't have to go very far before we meet somebody who knows somebody who knows that person. Uh, and so we're hoping that actually will help us to make some of those connections. So hope, hopefully that's that's helped. And just I'm just picking up from the chat here. There's some really useful stuff. Yes, we do need to to put something about my, uh, the definition of mindfulness. And maybe a mention, I wouldn't want this too much in this already without wanting to go into the detail on mindfulness, but a mention that this is pretty well researched and there's a big evidence base would be important. So thank you for, for that there. The definition is going to be interesting, isn't it? Um, and actually, in a discussion Kate and I had with uh, Mammy Nesta the other day, we were talking about where's the mindfulness thread that goes through a whole range of activities? Because we could be too precious about it's not mindfulness unless you're doing something very specific. And uh, the way that we are talking about mindfulness now over the last few years has broadened considerably. So we want to hang on to what is mindfulness. Um, but in a broader context. Sarah, did you want to come in on that? Yeah, I was just I was just thinking that the, the examples on the video were, were so lovely and they're really inspiring and you know and they could be the definition of mindfulness, couldn't they? That you know, learning people that are talking in this way say, so you know, present moments, this is what it means for me, this is what I do, you know, this is, you know, so the different kind of elements of it. Just having real real life examples from lots of different contexts, I think, would be really encouraging. Um, yeah, that's really helpful. Thanks, Sarah. Can I add to that? We we had some discussion in our group around um, the kind of how powerful, I guess, those video clips were, particularly including some home grown examples, um, and it was felt that to Kind of boost that further we could potentially include um clips from welsh assembly members and um uh so examples of people kind of uh, working in partnership in collaboration the kind of, to capture this kind of idea of co-creation and and mindful communities and it, it was also suggested that we could include um welsh language clips as well Yeah. Okay. I'm looking at. Yeah, yeah. You may not be able to see that I'm looking at Gwen Ann, but uh, but we can get some uh, some Welsh language ones. Yeah, we can get some Welsh language cl clips. Oh. Yeah. I'm sorry to be boring, but as your humble timekeeper, I'm just uh, saying it's twenty five past. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, any other comments? I will let you go at half past. And so I've certainly got the message of less is more uh, in terms, but it, if if it's less, it's got to be specific, hasn't it? You know, and really need your help on, on that one there. So anyone got an idea they'd like to throw in about how we could take this forward? Is there something there that you want to take forward? I think is the first, uh, first question there. Is there something that might have helped us, at least the people that are actually in the Zoom room, be able to talk about what we want, we would want to do as in nurturing mindful communities in a clearer way. 
even if it's not quite there yet. I'm not getting a lot of response around the, <laughs> a thumbs up, medium or thumbs down maybe from around the room. Yeah, has it clarified in any way what we might be working towards? And since we haven't arrived at it yet and we're co-creating it, we're not gonna have a, a definite yet. So what else do you need then? What else? What else can we do? What else do we need? How can you take it forward, Julia? If if it was shown to a health board, for example, and there was interest in somehow, um, you know, yeah, kind of cultivating the beautiful qualities, the inspiring beautiful qualities in that presentation, I'm guessing that they might think, well, how do we do that? Um, which perhaps was not not so answered. Like if people want to take it forward and bring in a mindfulness stream into their working culture, um, how yeah, how how might they do that? So that might be something to consider. Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking <laughs> on the back of that, Julia, um, a kind of flow chart of a, a real example of how someone might have done that, uh, just a pathway and then everyone starts to contribute to different pathways, um, you know, their pathway too. Mm, thanks, Elizabeth. Yeah, Judy. Yeah. Um, in terms of, you know, I, I, I'm processing a lot, but um, what comes to my mind in terms of, you know, first of all, the definition of mindfulness or one element of mindfulness that for me would be very important and that I can feel in various things that I do in my life is the quality of listening. And for example, each per because many, I, I, I think there are quite a lot of well, you know, well-being groups, but I often find when I'm in a group, um, I, it's te they tend to be dominated by certain people and then who are confident maybe and others don't who are less confident maybe don't have a voice so mindfulness for me would would be about each about people having an individual voice and being able to be heard um i i don't know where um yeah that's that's just coming up for me at the moment Mm, interesting. I've made a note of that. There's something to, to think about. The quality of listening is really important. That's what I've written down. Quality of listening. Thank, thank you. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we've got a minute just to, to round up on there. Are you happy if I send you a PDF of the slides? And if you'd be happy to scribble all over them and send them back? Or do whatever you, you need to, any any things, the bits that sang to you, the bits that didn't, because it needs to be cut down and it needs to be refined and whatever. Uh, and it needs to explain some of the things that aren't explained there. Uh, so this has been a, you know, to hopefully a bit of a, a workshop session. And if only that we had, you know, you had a chance to talk to each other and explore the ideas. And it is quite deliberately not finished because we won't know what it will look like and it will look different in every area, every group of organisations, every group of people that get together are going to decide themselves how they take it forward. There's there's no blueprint here. Go create, guys. This is what uh, the, the invitation. This is go create, go co-create. That, that's what we need to say. Go co-create. Go. Let's find out what else is happening. Uh, and let's do what we do best in, in Wales, link with each other, strengthen each other, support each other and build, you know, we, how do you eat an elephant? A bite at a time. So uh, let's see where we start there. I'm seeing some lovely things coming back through in the chat there. I don't know if you would just want to have a quick look, but I can send you the chat as well. So you've got that as well. So you, you can have a few things. We'll send this out to everyone who's here. And can I say thank you very much for your patience, for being part of this workshop, for allowing us to start this discussion. Uh, so can we, you know, just can carry on with it? Uh, we really want to look at building the network. And this is how we build the network, having less formal, uh, bringing you in at an earlier stage, not, you know, our presentations are great and they really raise our game. But how we build our network is talking to each other. 
So, oh, yeah, I'm picking up some really, really interesting stuff coming through in the chat, which I will share with you. I won't keep you any long. We're over time. So thanks from the bottom of my heart uh, for your contributions tonight. Really appreciated that. Uh, and uh, really great stuff. And please keep it coming. Don't make this the last time that we have these discussions. Let's co-create together. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciated. And thank you, Liz. Uh, thanks, Liz. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, well, have a good evening. Good night. Yeah. Uh,